uh, we're looking at verses 18 and 19. This is familiar to some of you. Uh, Jesus is talking uh, to the apostle Peter here, and he says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when you were young, you girded yourself, or you put your own clothes on, and you walked where you wanted to. But when you shall be old, somebody say, when you shall be old. When you shall be old. Look at somebody say, when you get old. When you get old. You're going to tell that person, I'm not talking about old in age. I'm not talking about old in age. But somebody say, old in spirit. Old in spirit. It says, but when you shall be old. But when you shall be old. Come on, look at somebody and they say, you old man, you old woman. Old 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 man. <laughs> but when you shall be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird you or clothe you. And carry you where you don't want to go. Yes. Mm. This spake he, signifying by what death Peter should glorify God. This spake he, signifying by what death Peter should glorify uh, God. And when he had spoke this, he said unto him, "Follow me." Now that's 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 quite a precursor to saying, "Follow me." Amen. I don't think most of us would would follow him after that. <laughs> I want you to look at Matthew 14, verses 28 and 29. Uh, this is uh, probably a few years before that statement. Matthew 14, verses 28 through 29. And it says, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it's you, give me permission to come to you on the water. Yes. And Jesus said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water to go to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Acts 27, and this is our last text, and then we're gonna then we're gonna preach. Falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the fore part stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the back part was broken with the violence of the waves. 43 and 44, and then we're gonna teach. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded them that which could swim should throw themselves first into the sea to get to land. And verse 44, and the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces. Somebody say some on broken pieces. Some on broken pieces. Somebody say some on broken pieces. Some on broken pieces. It says some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all saved to land. I want to take for a subject this morning out to sea, but in the wheel. Right. Out to sea, but in the wheel. Somebody say, I might be out to sea. I might be out to sea. But somebody say, I'm still in the wheel. Oh, Lord, help us for a few minutes by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, uh, no matter what we're talking about in life, it is so important to have an accurate expectation from the beginning of a thing. Knowing is comfortable. And knowing something before you get into something is not only comfortable, but knowing what it does is it mentally adjusts us so that we're not frustrated when uncomfortable variables present themselves. Amen. You know, evil people take advantage of others through hiding things up front. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You, you've probably been through this before. Uh, you probably went to a slick and slimy used car dealer before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. And when they get ready to draw the loan, there's a whole bunch of fast paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And they want you to sign real fast but not read all the fine print. About 20 pages of paperwork they don't want you to read. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you have gone through this when you're, you, maybe it's been a predatory loan, a, 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 a payday loan. Yeah. Or maybe it's been... <laughs> How many people know about a payday loan? Yeah. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, how in the world are you supposed to be able to pay back a payday loan when you get paid every week? Yeah, right. And you ain't got the money to pay this week, and so you get a loan, so how are you going to pay what you're supposed to pay next week? Right. And the interest is usually about 120% on top of it. You know, it could be beneficial for you to accurately read the full job description before you sign up for a job. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because you'll feel better just knowing what to expect up front and from the beginning. Amen. Amen. Because what ends up happening is you can mentally prepare yourself and know what you're supposed to be doing when you go to work. And because you already know what you're supposed to be doing, there's no surprises. 
you're already adjusted to it. But what happens sometimes is you can get a boss or a supervisor and they can put more on you than what they initially said from the beginning. Right. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. And see, the people will ask things of you that were not initially agreed upon from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens consequentially? You, you can also avoid, if I know up front from the beginning, I can avoid being asked to do things that's not in my pay grade. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Because it's not just a stress thing, it's a money thing too. Amen. 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 You ain't paid me enough to do all this stuff you ain't told me about. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. This same principle is important. It's why it's important to get premarital counseling. Amen. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. If you find somebody and it's really serious, amen, you need to know everything up front. Amen. That's right. All the skeletons need to come out the closet. Y'all ain't hearing me in here. Okay? Yeah. Amen. You need to know everything. Amen. amen. The good, bad, and the ugly. You need to know what their likes and dislikes are. You need to know what things move them and drive them, what the vision and goal is for life. Amen. And preferably, it needs to be in a setting where there's a mediator. Amen, amen somebody. Amen. You need to talk about financial habits. Amen. You need to talk about intimacy. Amen. And even though this, this is church, amen, you need to sit down with somebody that would at least generally talk about sex. Come on here, somebody. Amen. You need to know everything. You need to know if you like to clean up. Amen. You need to know if you like to cook. Amen. Do you like to eat out all the time or you like to boil a hot dog? You, you, you need to know. You need to know it all. Amen. Because you need to know it from the beginning because you can get halfway down the road on a trip. Amen. And find out that things were different than what you originally agreed on. In like manner, people could benefit from having parenting classes. Amen. 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 And some people are probably saying, well, can't nobody tell me you know that what are you, I'm just you have a baby, you just take care of the baby. <laughs> and it's not that simple, amen. amen. There's different things that you're to go through at different ages and different stages, amen. You need to know how to safely take care of a baby. Yeah. You need to know things that don't need to be around a baby. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You need to know things you don't say in front of children. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And so people can benefit from, from knowing before they get into things. Amen. Because you don't want to get down the road and find out what you got into is something totally different than what you originally thought. Amen. Yeah. The, re the reason we're talking about that is the same thing is true about your spiritual life. I think Christians need the truth up front from the beginning. Amen. You need to know God is good. You need to know and confess the word. And you need to know that you can hold on to the promise of God. And for the most part, you will experience tremendous victory in your life as a Christian. And see God make ways out of no way and open yes. doors that no man can open. And he'll, and how many people know sometimes he's good because he'll shut some doors. Yes. Y'all ain't hearing me in here. Yes. Is there anybody glad in here that there were some doors that you didn't want shut, but God shut them for you? Yeah. Some people need some doors shut right now. You can expect them to be good. You expect the promise of God. You expect great triumphs. You can expect to be in trouble. He's going to get you out of trouble. But what is not told to us initially is that God is not just good, but God is also sovereign and God is also provident. And then what I mean by that is that God has an ultimate plan to be good and to cause good to unfold, but yet the road to get to that good sometimes can contain some things that he thinks is beneficial for you, but you may think it's very uncomfortable, and you can get to a place that while he's doing what he's doing in your life that you don't have a clue about because you're not as old as he is, and you're not as wise as he is, and you can't see what he sees. That's right. Amen. And he can see some things that's in you that needs to come out of you. Amen. And he can bring the perfect storm to your life to pull out of you things that's going to be in the way of your destiny. Amen. God can do things that he, somebody, how many of you know that when you got saved, you didn't just get a God, you got a daddy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And any daddy is not going to do what you want or what you think because you're only five years old. 
You don't know what you're talking about yet because you haven't experienced what the daddy has experienced. Amen. And he's going to do things for you that you don't agree with. And, and people, and, and I love, uh, uh, I love the idea of people saying, well, you need a five-year plan and you got to plan this and plan that. But sometimes when you're in the will of God, you can make a five-year plan, but you better write it in pencil and not pen because you're going to have to erase some of it. Amen. God can do things that's beneficial for you, but you don't feel like it's good. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm telling you, and I'm a faith preacher more than anybody else, and I want you to know the promises of God, all of them, they're all going to come to pass in your life, and all those good things are going to happen just as long as you hold on to them. And you're going to see fruit emerge in your life. God's going to make you fruitful. He's going to use you for his glory. His anointing is going to rest on you. You're going to encourage a lot of people. People will get saved because of you. And sometimes you're going to, people are going to get saved not just because you preach to them. Some people are going to get saved because just they see the transformation that hits your life. And all those things are going to happen, and you're going to have fruit as you abide in Jesus. But guess what? That same text that says that, that, that you're going to bear fruit, it also says that you're going to be pruned. Yeah. You can focus so much on the fruit part that you can forget that Jesus promised you that he's going to prune. And to prune means that when a gardener takes a vine or a plant that has dead things, and they take scissors and they cut stuff off of the plant. And some of you in here right now are going through things right now, and it's not that the situation is stressing you out. You're stressing yourself because God is trying to cut some stuff off of you so that you can be more fruitful, but you're trying to hold on to things that God is trying to cut away. Because if you don't cut off the dead branches of a plant, then the dead branches and the dead vines will take away the life force that's supposed to be going to the fruit. You won't see many victories in your life when you walk with God. But the truth is, and we don't tell people the whole truth, is that there will be many moments where that you will question, why in the world would God allow the thing that's going on in my life right now? It's true God is good, but God also uses negative events to produce things that we could have never thought of. Somebody give God a praise for that. God uses negative things, and sometimes he uses harsh winds to push us closer to him yes. and closer to our mission. Yes. The reason I was compelled to give you the text from Matthew 14, where Peter is walking on water, uh, first Jesus walking on water, then he gives Peter permission to walk on water, is that Jesus has the ability to make a disciple able to walk on the water in the middle of a storm. Mm -hmm. But in the case of the main text we went to in Acts 27, in Paul's case, and, and comparing Peter and Paul, Peter loved Jesus, and Peter was a great friend of Jesus. Peter had it at that time where he denied Jesus, but other than that, Peter was very zealous, and Peter cut somebody for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need a deacon board like that. In this <laughs> Put that switch plate up. <laughs> Paul is the greatest of the apostles. Paul went everywhere to preach the gospel. Paul didn't care who didn't want to hear the message. Right. And Paul didn't care if you stoned him. Right. Paul was stoned many times. Paul was beaten with whips and rods, had marks on his body. And he even had an argument one time in one of his letters. He says, and I'll prove to you an apostle by the whips on my back. Yeah. He took the gospel to the ends of the earth. He wasn't like some of these modern day people that call themselves apostles now. That's right. What we got in the church now are snakeskin apostles. Yeah. Yeah. Apostles just, we just want to put on a nice suit and some snakeskin shoes, amen, and call themselves an apostle. 18 year old kids and, 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 all, and, and every woman that starts a church, I'm sorry, every woman that starts a church all over town calls themselves an apostle. And nobody's raising the dead, nobody's healing the sick, nobody's casting out devils, nobody's planting churches. Come on here, somebody. If you don't have one successful church, how can you be a church planner? If we judge what an apostle is by Peter and Paul, nobody's an apostle. That's right. We should just call ourselves pastors and chalk it up. Amen. Amen. 
Whoa, what happened? Peter was wonderful. Peter walked by people. They, they lined people on the side of the road so that Peter's shadow could come by them. Yes. Because he had been around Jesus so yes. much that Jesus took his glory to God Almighty. Yes. The same anointing. That, see, that's what happens when you hang around people. Yes. That had an anointing before you had an anointing. Yes. That there'll be a transfer. Yes. That what happened in Jesus started happening in Peter's life. Yes. Yes. Peter was awesome, but Paul was more driven than Peter. Now watch this. Peter walks on the water. Yes. Paul is more devoted to Jesus than Peter was. But now Paul, even though he's in the will of God, comes up against a Category 5 hurricane in the middle of the ocean and he finds himself in the pitch black dark in the middle of the storm for 14 days. The boat is rocking. The winds are blowing. The boat is getting ready to turn over. Everybody thinks they're getting ready to die. And he gets a word. This is the crazy thing about it. He gets a word to say, guys, I already know that this ship is getting ready to get in trouble. That this is what messed me up. If God could speak to Paul and tell him that he's getting ready to get in trouble, why could not God block the trouble from coming? First, thing, first I, I read and I said, well, you know what? This is what the problem is. Because the Bible says that when Paul was first getting started, he went to Peter's house for 14 days and stayed over there so he could talk to Peter. So I was thinking, maybe he should have hanged around Peter a little bit longer. <laughs> because some of that water walking anointing was going to be needed down the road. But you know what? The more I prayerfully considered this, I understand that that even though Peter had a lot of grace, the more I pay attention to the text, I realize that Paul, he knows what's going to happen. God tells him what's going to happen. God even shows up as the angel of the Lord to encourage Paul. But even though he shows up as the angel of the Lord and says, y'all going to get through this. The ship is going to be destroyed and damaged. It's going to suffer hurt, but y'all going to come out with your lives. By the end of the text, the whole ship is destroyed and they wind up in the middle of the sea holding on to boys and broken pieces. As faithful as Paul was, as, as anointed as Paul was, as much as Paul was in the will of God, as much as Paul obeyed Christ, as much as Paul loved Jesus more than he loved himself, he said, yet not I live, but Christ lives in me. He said, either way, he says, if I die and depart, I'll be in the presence of the Lord. If I stay right here, then Christ will move for me. He says, either way, he says, I'm going to serve Jesus. He says, I count everything I've ever had. I count it as done. Everything I ever accomplished, all the degrees I've had. Being a Pharisee of the Pharisees, I, I count it all done. Just so I can know Jesus. I don't want a Bentley. I don't want a new house. I just want Jesus. I just want souls. You can have it all.
He says, and by the end of it, he says, you got to be brought before Caesar. I need you to witness to Caesar. I need you to preach to Caesar. I need you to go to the island and bring revival. I need you to plant churches. I need you to write letters. I need you to do all these things with me, and you're going to get to the end. But what he doesn't tell him is all the other hell he's going to go through. That's right. That's right. And do you realize that God did not stop that hurricane? He did not stop the destruction of the boat. And he and all the passengers of the boat end up winding up in the middle of the sea. And great, holy, righteous, anointed, sanctified, saved, sanctified people, the Holy Ghost, Paul is in the water. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that Joseph in Genesis had a clear vision of his destiny, but he winded up in prison for years because he, because of something that he didn't even do. That's right. Do you realize the stress David should have been under? He was just this shepherd boy in the backyard of his family watching over these little sheep. And all of a sudden, he didn't ask for it. But Samuel comes to their house and puts oil on his head. And as soon as he's anointed with oil, then a few weeks later, bears and lions start coming out of the woods. Right. But do you know that the bears and lions were used, as stressful, as dangerous as it was, they were used as a stepping stone to prepare him because a few weeks later, he was going to have to face a 12-foot giant by the name of Goliath. Right. And do you know that that stressful moment of facing Goliath was going to be used as a stepping stone because there was something bigger than Goliath that he was getting ready to face. He was getting ready to come into the palace and have his life threatened every day by the king of Israel. And do you realize that if he had never gone through the stress of being almost killed by King Saul, he never would have been prepared to become king himself and to manage, become the ruler of the free world. Amen. You realize Jesus needed a Judas? He needed Judas. He says, I chose 12 of you. And he says, one of you is a devil. He knew it. That's right. Jesus needed a Judas so that Jesus could be arrested, so that Jesus could be crucified, so that Jesus could get up from the dead. And if he never would have got up from the dead, we never would have been saved. Many times we don't realize that the negative things that happen sometimes is because what we do is negative things happen and we fight each other and blame each other. Amen. That's right. What you do is if you come into a church and something negative happens in church, you'll blame the board or you'll blame the pastor of the church. Yeah. You'll be in your home and a negative thing happens and you'll point fingers at the other people in the house. Yeah. Yeah. As if it was their fault. Amen. Yeah. You'll be at work and something goes wrong. How many know unexpected things happen in business and work and stuff? Yeah. And you want to blame the person in charge. Yeah. But what you got to understand is sometimes stuff happens and sometimes the ship turns upside down and it's in the will of God. Yes. Yes. It's in the will of God because sometimes, and I'm almost done here, sometimes God is glorified not just in your high moments in life. God is glorified when you go through a shipwreck moment in your life. When you go through a Category 5 hurricane or a life-altering situation, sometimes the people around you can't just see you shouting and dancing and glorifying God when everything is going good. Sometimes you got to go through something and people will know that your God is real, not because everything is going good, but if you can go through some bad stuff but still keep a praise on your head, let people know that your God is the real God. That the power of God is not that, that God blocks it from happening, but sometimes the power of God is I'm going through a storm in my life, I'm going through a test in my life, but the reason I haven't lost my mind is because God is keeping my mind. Oh, 
to walk over water. But sometimes uh, Christians float in the water. Yeah. Glory to God. Sometimes uh, you can speak to the storm. But sometimes uh, you're going to walk in the storm.
This is a moment between you and God. I'm not preaching an evangelistic message today. I'm preaching a prophetic message to somebody here today. You're in the middle of a storm right now. Shabbat. And I want you to understand that as a Christian, life ain't going to be peaches and cream all the time. Sometimes stuff is going to happen. But God wants to see if you're going to still hold on to a broken ship sometimes. Because there's a great purpose and a great anointing that's coming on the other end of that thing. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning of a thing. For God declares the end from the beginning. God already knows that he has a hope and a plan and a future for you. He knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you. The devil has been telling some of you all that all hope is lost. Maybe God has forgotten about you. But I want you to know that God is good and his mercy endure forever. Glory to God. While your heads are bowed, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for my brothers and my sisters in this place. And I pray that you would build them and encourage them and strengthen them in the Lord right now. I pray that through this word, you have shed light in our heart to show us that you're the God and the master of the sea. Peter walked on water, but you kept Paul in the water. And that means you're going to keep me in the middle of what I'm going through. The devil's trying to tell me that I can't get out. But you're going to cause me to go to shore. We praise you for who you are. We bless your holy name, Lord. Thank you, oh, master of the sea, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen. And Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you'll give wisdom, you give understanding, you give guidance by your word in the name of Jesus. 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 some things I'm going to cut and I'm going to prune and I'm going to cut them away. 